Jeff Burton is a very good NASCAR driver in my opinion. Nicknamed the Mayor, he won 21 times in his Cup Series career, but his final full-time season, the 2013 season, running for Richard Childress Racing number 31 Caterpillar Chevy, was disastrous. And I'm going to tell you the story of it and Jeff Burton's sad and sad exit from full-time Cup Series racing. The season started out about as bad as it possibly could. He finished 30th after crashing. Though he did get a top 10 the next week at Phoenix, it was back to the bottom of the charts at Vegas where he finished 26th, then a 32nd at Bristol, a 17th at Auto Club, an 18th at Martinsville, and a 23rd at Texas. Put this with the 18th at Kansas, and guess what? He hasn't even had a top, he's had one top 10 in the first eight races. Things weren't looking good at all for Jeff Burton, but a visit to the Virginia short track of Richmond helped get things up. He led his first laps of the season, leading seven in the 406 lap event, and getting his first top five, finishing fifth, and was 19th in points after the event. He did lead another lap at Talladega, but only mustered a 28th place finish, and after a disappointing 21st at Darlington and ranking 20th in the points, everyone wondered if Jeff Burton had truly come off the rails and had truly been washed up and aged. He finished 12th at Charlotte and then followed that up with an 11th at Dover, an 11th at Pocono, and a 10th at Michigan. As the summer started, things seemed to be looking up. But the road course in California of Sonoma only brought disappointment as he finished 31st. Then a 19th at Kentucky and a 16th at Daytona and all of a sudden things were looking, well, off looking. He was relegated back to 21st in the points after getting up as high as 17th after Michigan and looking like he might have a little bit in him to push for the chase. At Loudon though, the team got some spark back and moved all the way up to 17th in the points. They didn't lead any laps. They had led one at Daytona, but they finished third and had their second top five of the season. Everyone thought there might be some consistency again in the team, but they were wrong. A 43rd at Indianapolis set the team back now to 20th in points again. They stayed there after a 36th at Pocono, a 26th at Watkins Glen, but then, in 8th at Michigan, a track where he had run well earlier. Bristol, he finished 13th, but then it was back to Atlanta, where he finished 34th. At Richmond, his final chance to make the chase? Well, he obviously didn't. He finished 18th. Everyone knew at this point that Burton wouldn't be returning to RCR, and everyone knew that it was for the reason that he was washed up. Now, I don't want this to affect Jeff Burton's legacy, or your view on him. He is a legendary NASCAR driver and has had duels with the likes of Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, and others. But this 2013 season really showed his age and it really showed why Ryan Newman was going to come in and replace him. And Newman actually did a great job making the championship four. Some thought that in the chase, Burton might run better with no pressure being put on his shoulders. And for the first three races, this was pretty true a 14th at Chicagoland, an 8th at Loudoun, and a 14th at Dover, then a 12th at Kansas, but Charlotte brought a 21st, as did Talladega, and things weren't looking good anymore. He climbed to 19th in the points and fallen back to 20th, but with a strong 11th at Martinsville, he was back up to 19th, and he actually led five laps in this race, which would be the last laps that he would ever lead in 2013. Texas, though, a 24th, Phoenix a 17th, and in his final race for RCR, in the final race of his final full-time season, running the Caterpillar Thank You Jeff scheme on a Chevrolet, he finished 23rd, 23rd. The final full-time season of Jeff Burton might have been a disaster, but his career was far from it as he had a legendary and very storied career, like I mentioned earlier. 
However, I think if he could have gotten out of this car in 2012, and maybe handed it over to Newman sooner, even though Newman did have a good year in 2013, or a solid year anyway, winning the Brickyard 400, I think it might have bettered Jeff Burton, and some newer NASCAR fans' view on him. I first started watching in 2013 full time, and while I don't have any memories of thinking Jeff Burton was bad, I probably didn't think too highly of him. But after studying his career, and now he's actually one of my favorite older drivers, I guess you could say, I really like him, and I think his career is Hall of Fame worthy. Winning two Coca-Cola 600s, a Southern 500, driving for the Cat in the Hat Jack Roush, it just seems like Jeff Burton is a really likable guy, and a very good driver. That being said, however, his final full-time season was abysmal, and a disappointment. And this has been the story of Jeff Burton's, well, awful final full-time season in the Cup Series. The 2013 season. A season no Jeff Burton fan will ever look upon fondly. He finished 20th in the points and ended up winning $3.9 million. His average start, 19.9. His average finish, 19. How many laps did he lead? 19. He was winless, only had two top fives and just six top tens. A sixth of the time, he ran in the top ten, which meant five sixths of the time, he was outside that top ten. He only crashed twice. And, well, that might be good, but I bet he would have traded in eight DNFs for some better runs or a win. So, while the season might not have been great, his career was, but we're not talking about his career as a whole. We're just here to talk about the bad 2013 season, and this has been the story of it. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, comment, visit our website, StubsCupSeries.com, and share my channel in the video. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Stubbs from StubbsCupSeries.com. God bless. Peace out. Bye. Subscribe.